everybody, time for a quick update this week. So I did finish the barricades and you can see I didn't put quite as much detail into them as I had originally planned, uh, mainly because I just didn't really want to. I didn't really feel the need to spend a whole lot of time on them uh, since essentially they're all just rusty anyway. I mean, it's just orc stuff. So I did do the base color. Um, the base is actually, the base, the groundwork is actually kind of hard to paint because there's a lot of uh, detail to it. So you kind of have to like, um, you can't just paint it. You have to like uh, glob the paint on to get it into the in, in between the individual grains. So that was kind of annoying. I did pick out, pick out all the bones and the imperial stuff. See, so a bunch of bones here. So where's that pile? Is the pile of uh, space marine helmets? I did those in rust too, and those, all the parts that were rusty, I just kind of tacked on some paint. Like most of the paints flaked off. Um, the Cadian stuff, I did in greens. I tracked the the last gun here and the tracks. I did pick out the signage here. I didn't want those to, to look a little better. I didn't do any highlights or anything. I just kind of left it rusty and dirty. And uh, I did add a little bit of weathering. So a while back I got a couple of Secret Weapon Miniatures we weathering stuff as a free sample. So I had a light dust, which is completely the wrong color for anything I do. And we got this engine grime, which will probably get used quite a bit. Uh, the top of this was actually dried out, so it's kind of hard to get the stuff out. But I just did like weathering streaks down on all of it with that engine grime. Probably can't see it too well on the camera, but it has a little bit of weathering touch. This one's a little bit thicker. These are a little bit thicker here. So I guess it's just a little touch of weathering. Just enough, so... Overall, I'm pretty happy with them. So I did try something I hadn't tried yet on these, and that was the one dollar or the dollar store stenciling brush I bought a few months ago with my dollar store hobby videos, and using it as a stippling brush. That's this one right here. And I have to say, this is an absolutely awesome stippling brush. Even doing all of these here, I mean, there's no damage to the bristles or anything. They're still they're just right for stippling. Just the right amount of firmness, not too, not too firm, not too soft. Um, the quality is not there because the bristles kind of will slide out of the ferrule. Well, they did when wet, so they must have some sort of water-soluble glue because as I was cleaning the brush, the ferrules would come out. So yeah, it looks like it's got a water-soluble glue holding, the, holding them in. Um, but yeah, the only thing is it didn't really work well getting into all the details. I mean, but look at the look at the results here. I think they just speak for themselves. It's just absolutely fantastic how this came out. And again, I, the only two colors I use for rust are the Doom Bull Brown and the uh, Troll Slayer Orange. Because it's a nice orangey brown and then the Troll Slayer Orange just kind of picks it out a little bit more. You know, I could probably dry brush it get some with some chain mail or something get the edges shiny again if I really needed to, but I don't think these will these need it. So yeah, this, I mean, but if you buy a couple of these, I would consider, you know, maybe cutting one down to half the size to get into smaller details if you do it on pieces like this. But if you're just doing large train pieces, this is excellent. I mean, it's big enough to get the job done in a decent amount of time. So it's definitely worth, definitely worth the dollar I spent on this. And I also just about done with the second set of uh, Blood Bowl Nobblers, which are my... Uh, um, Mech gun crew. So this ones are done in blue and green to go along with the red and yellow ones I did. So I'll have six or four units of six models. Again, there's one different po there's six different poses, which is almost like prophetic when <laughs> for mech gun crews. So you have one of each pose on each mech gun. And yeah, so I've got four sets of six for my four mech guns. So I'll finally be able to have a full set of mech gun crew on the board along with all my other grots. And uh, so these things are really cool because they're very small, so they're very unobtrusive. And they don't have any weapons on them, so that's perfect for mech gun crews, so they don't have weapons. And they're just, a, and they're just so small, as you can see compared to these barrier, barriers, barricades here. So, yeah, that's about it for this update. Pretty quick video this week. Um, any questions, let me know. But of course, by the time you see this video, the first reveals from Saga of the Beast will be out. And this week's Talking About Orcs will be going over the first couple days of releases and my thoughts on them. So, see you on Wednesday. Thanks for watching.